these service members. Uh, we plan on getting the plaque from the National Garden Club, uh, and we plan on getting a stone, uh, which if you look in your package, you'll see that, uh, and I apologize to those who are uh, joining us virtually, but uh, you'll see a depiction of what we want to do. You'll also see a schematic in there that gives you the dimensions. It's not oversized. It's not something grand. Uh, it's something that merely depicts uh, a dignified, respected monument worthy of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice and call Kansas home. Uh, the plaque is at a cost, a minimal cost, of about $530. Um, the granite, of course, we're going to reach out to a local company here in the state, uh, hopefully to get a price that we can work with. But the committee's working hard, and the committee's already in place to start having fundraising events in order to, to raise the money for this particular monument. Our, uh, our timeline, if you should approve this particular request, is to put this on the ground and have a ceremony in late summer. That's a pretty aggressive timeline when you think about all the things that have to take place, but I think it's something, knowing the committee members that are on the Gold Star Memorial Fundraising Committee, something that they're charged and energized to do. So, once again, thank you for the opportunity to come here and present this request for this project. I think it's, uh, you know, although we don't have one on the grounds right now, I will tell you, I think it was an oversight, not something that was on purpose, but I think it's something that we need to correct. I think it's something that we as Kansans, as in as much patriotism as we show for this nation and for our state, is something we can do. Um, subject to that, uh, that concludes my remarks and I'm open for questions. I want to clarify one thing. This is the image you are talking about. That is correct. Not, uh, because I have seen other. Um, You've probably seen an obelisk? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But the decision was made to go with the, uh, I guess it's the podium or the pedestal. So you all should have one of these. Okay. That's the only one that should be in your, in your package. Are there any questions? I can start the questions. No one else is ready. Um, I have a few questions, and that has to do with um, one of them was the design. So this, I think this is um, appropriate design compared to some of the larger ones for the Capitol. Uh, I, I was concerned about that early on, but I think we talked about that. And um, you have hinted at uh, the cost because Part of what will happen if we approve this is then there must be a bill introduced to the legislature um, because we've, we have um, suggested that this move forward. And so it has to go through the legislative session. And traditionally, there's not been money associated with those. It's usually private funding. Um, can, will there, would your group be able to raise the funds for it's this? It's all private funding. Okay. That's what the committee's put together on. Okay. That's why we're trying to make sure we scope the project in line with what we think is in the realm of possible. Uh, number two, uh, we have four members on the fundraising committee. They're not to fundraise, but it's a bilateral cooperative effort by both parties. Uh, we have two members on the Republican side and the Democratic side because this particular project is all Kansans can get around. So. We do have the folks that are going to champion that through the legislative process already for us. And uh, we're always open to welcome additional individuals to join as well. Do you have, we, um, ultimately it will be the working with the Department of uh, Administration and others on where that placement would be. But do you have an idea in your head or does your group have of where you would like this to be? Uh, to be honest with you, I've walked the Veterans Walk. Uh, there's a number of positions there. Uh, I think anywhere along that walk, possibly under one of the established trees, would probably be the best position. Thank you very much. Are there other questions? Yes, Frank. The example that's shown here obviously is sitting on the existing planter. This would be a, a standalone monument so the footing the foundation and everything associated would also be part of your cost 
and install. And then my second question, is there any special lighting features or anything else planned, or is this primarily for a daytime viewing? This is primarily for daytime. That's when we think people will be visiting the Capitol, uh, primarily. Uh, but uh, you're also correct in it being a standalone uh, and will require those particular pieces as well, which will incorporate into the total cost. Any other questions from the committee? Yes, Larry. You have the plaque there. Can you um, describe in generality what the plaque says, what, it's, what it states on it? Well, that's a little difficult. Uh, on our committee, we have Gold Star families um, that are part of the process, and we want to have them be able to communicate uh, their request. So I don't want to answer that. I have my own opinion but I don't want to get out in front of the committee uh, before we decide what we want to put on the actual plaque. Um, but I have seen several examples that primarily and simply say, uh, in, in honor of Gold Star families that have given really the ultimate sacrifice, a son or daughter in service to this nation. I've seen that and that very dignified. Okay, and it, it isn't a listing of families. It isn't saying how many there are in Kansas, but it's more of a general statement of recognizing Gold Star families. That's correct. Okay, thank you. I think if, you know, for example, we have a family. Uh, her son was killed in action in Iraq, uh, and, and when he was killed in action, she was located in Iowa. The unit was at Fort Riley, Kansas, that he belonged to. Uh, her husband recommended to her that she move uh, to be closer to Fort Riley and be a part of the organization that's wrapped their arms around that family so she can still feel like a part of the military. And so they moved from Iowa. He moved down and he's in Emporia. Uh, he works as emergency manager in Emporia or in that directorate. And uh, she's a part of the Fort Riley uh, community, that organization and that unit. So if we start putting numbers on plaques and they change, then we have a significant problem. That's a good point. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Um, let me follow up on that question. Um, the way this would work is if it was um, quite uh, generally, the uh, what it's going to say or what it looks like, the specifics come back to this committee for review, and it's a it's a joint project for us. And are you okay with that? I'm absolutely okay. I'm sure you and I will become good friends through this <laughs> process. Okay, <laughs> I'll take you up on that. Um, and anything else, or are you ready to make a recommendation? Do I have a motion? Yes, Will. Okay, Will made the motion to approve, and Senator? I'll second. Okay, and Senator Bowers made the second. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? I think it passes. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, I appreciate it, and I look forward to working with you, Ms. Uh, Chin. And let me ask you one other question. Do you have um, legislators? I'm sure you can find them, but do you have legislators that you sort of have lined up if you wanted, because yeah, you will need legislation now. Um, there, are, there are legislators sitting yes, in this room, or do you need, uh, do you well, need us to do Well, I could always that? recruit additional. I'm sure the individuals that I'm currently talking to will absolutely reach out to the members here. Um, but right now we have members on, on both sides of the aisle uh, that are very, very, uh, uh, I'd say very, very ecstatic about being able to do this and encouraged. And they are going to reach out. The more the merrier as we work through this legislative process. I am a neophyte to that. As a 34-year-old you know, military guy, I didn't know all the things I didn't know. Uh, so, you know, I'll use any help. Uh, that you can offer. And uh, like I said, I'm the executive director of the Governor's Military Council. So if you need to get a hold of me, just reach out. And uh, I'm always willing to listen and, and take advice.
Well, if you do make um, specific arrangements, it would be good to have someone in the House and the Senate, um, and it would be good to be bipartisan. Um, if you would let both myself and Heather know so we can then help the committee know what's going do on. Do you want to know who they are? I mean, I can tell you because they're already sure. on the committee. Are they on the list? Okay. They got Senator they Tom Hawk, testimony? Senator Jeff Longbine, Senator Jeff Pittman, and Representative Mike Dodson. Okay, great. We've and I believe you do have the list or in your folder. I just had too many papers here, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. That's why I'm here. Okay. Thank you very much. Then Thank you. Passed. Appreciate it. Appreciate your work on this. Okay, our next presenter, it should be on um, the screen online, and that is from K-State. Um, and we have only communicated through um, uh, email, so we have never met. So please, when you start, pronounce your name for us. <laughs> so I don't butcher it. Thank you very much, but you're on. <laughs> Uh, opportunity to present uh, this particular exhibition project. Uh, my name is Shri Pat Joglicker. Uh, I mentioned in my testimony print, uh, it's easy to call me Shri, uh, so we can just go by Shri. Uh, so uh, I would like to, uh, as I speak, I would like to share my screen uh, and show you a presentation uh, with some images that are part of this exhibition. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> And let me just remind the committee, this is a request for a temporary exhibit, which ten technically is under this committee, so. And everybody see uh, a uh, PDF file presentation? Uh, so uh, this is a project that uh, was primarily started between three different uh, departments here at Kansas State. It is the art department, English department and journalism department. And uh, we wanted to create a collaborative project focusing on some social concern, uh, especially in rural parts of Kansas. Uh, this was our attempt to make people, make students aware that they can create work uh, that have a real life impact and uh, they can create work that engages with their immediate society. Uh, this is especially important for students in art because a lot of times uh, we see art students being uh, engaged in self-expression that uh, is very introvert and we wanted to kind of change that uh, through uh, a curricular pr kind of process. Uh, so Hungry Heartland uh, uh, project began uh, as an investigation of uh, food deserts in Kansas. So this even this concept of food desert what really was really new for a lot of faculty members here that became part of this project eventually, and also the students primarily. And so uh, we began this project in 2018. It's an ongoing project uh, and that focuses on students in three different classes, uh, sort of investigating uh, the nature of this problem, uh, which is geographic, but also financial or economic. Uh, so they, they kind of focus on issues of food deserts, uh, being in a food desert, and also issues of food insecurity. Uh, the first uh, iteration of this project is now uh, sort of has unfolded into an exhibition uh, using the images that the photography students that I teach uh, created in 2018. Uh, in the project that when we began the project in 2018, we primarily focused on three different counties. Uh, it was Republic, Cloud, uh, and Jewel. Uh, and so uh, here on the map, uh, we have the purple dot, which is our K-State in Manhattan, and the three counties identified with several locations uh, that we faculty members arranged for students to reach out. Uh, these different locations or these different uh, sort of uh, points of interest included farmers, uh, grocery store owners, uh, and other individuals, other institutions, uh, such as uh, elementary schools and high schools uh, that uh, have something to say, that have something to express regarding their experience of either being in a food desert or uh, having some solutions uh, have overcome the conditions of food desert or food insecurity. Uh, so this uh, sort of uh, 
uh, project in a way began in you know focusing on these three particular counties and uh, throughout the semester students researched uh, their destinations where they are going to make images or where they are going to for the mass communication for the journalism students uh, they were supposed to get testimonies uh, from people and create short documentaries uh, expressing those concerns in the testimonies and uh, my students, the photography students, were uh, supposed to create images, and they throughout the semester they focused on these particular points of interest. Uh, we later in the semester had a field trip, a weekend long field trip, uh, where students uh, created images uh, in a traditional fashion. Uh, so it was my class that went on this field trip, uh, learns photography uh, with large format cameras and with film technology, uh, and uh, so. We had to kind of combine the content, which is the realities of food desert, along with the technique that we otherwise uh, want students to master uh, in this particular class. So these are some of the behind the scenes kind of uh, images uh, of that, that particular field trip. Uh, the images that I'm going to present here come from four different uh, students. Uh, so all these images are part of the exhibition that I'm proposing. Uh, there are more uh, which I'm not able to show here uh, because of their size and because the way it may or may not come through uh, in a video conference. Uh, uh, David Peterson uh, was one of the first students uh, that I'm going to show images of. Uh, she focused on uh, the Jewel uh, grocery store uh, so the images that students made uh, looked at people as well as places, uh, and it was kind of interesting, very emotional, uh, in a way, uh, experience for students because they, through making these images, understood that uh, sometimes that they have experienced growing up, uh, that they didn't have the name for, such as food insecurity or uh, being in a food desert, they understood those conditions uh, as they sort of made these images and talked with people who are, uh, in a way, helping overcome this situation. So these images, these few images are from uh, Boxa Farm, uh, where a farmer uh, uh, who is a part-time school teacher uh, has a corner of a, a sort of intersection uh, into a seasonal farm, and he uh, sort of uh, uh, has a small honor uh, store where after selling his uh, vegetables uh, in the farmer's market, uh, he basically has anybody who needs vegetables uh, uh, use this honor system where, you know, anybody can pick up vegetables and pay as much as they want or not if they can't afford it. So these kind of solutions of uh, generosity of uh, ingenuity uh, while balancing two jobs while being you know uh, a uh, elementary school teacher uh, I think uh, it was an illuminating experience for students as they made images so uh, we really sort of uh, uh, this project taught the students more than what they typically sign up for a class uh, and uh, the exhibition in a way uh, sort of shows their experience and what we intend to do through this exhibition is to make uh, the audience aware uh, of the presence of food deserts, but also presence of uh, the ingenious, uh, sort of courageous tendencies uh, that uh, citizens have in order to overcome these uh, situations uh, of being in a food desert or uh, being not able to access uh, healthy, nutritious food. Uh, a part of our team also focused on Cuba. Uh, this is one of the uh, only uh, uh, grocery store in Cuba, Kansas. Uh, and uh, Julia Ali focused on the sort of a, a very engaged community uh, that gathers around this grocery store. Uh, uh, the images that she made uh, shows a very different picture than what we typically expect or imagine uh, reading about food deserts. Uh, it showed a community that is extremely engaged, uh, extremely uh, sort of communal and uh, sort of hanging on uh, uh, with, the, with the anchor being that one grocery store in Cuba. Uh, students made images uh, in the grocery stores. They talked with grocery store owners. 
in order to understand the difficulties that they have being in food deserts, the difficulties of logistics and being able to stock uh, enough nutritious, fresh produce. Uh, and their testimonies, uh, their artist statements uh, give voice to the sort of dynamic and multifaceted issue uh, of food desert and food insecurity. Uh, Shea Washington focused on an elementary school uh, in which the school meal program has been assisted by community farmers, uh, which help uh, it become a lot more nutritious than what the school itself can afford. Uh, so this was another illuminating example where the local farmers uh, are supporting uh, the school lunch programs uh, and overcoming uh, the otherwise fiscal or geographical issue of food insecurity. Uh, so these are all images from that uh, elementary school. Uh, from North Central Kansas. Uh, Dakota Smith was a photography student who also was majoring in architecture. And he created some interesting images uh, focusing on the landscape and the architecture uh, that we came across uh, in the three counties that we visited. Uh, he, uh, these are some of the images from Cuba uh, as well as uh, from Jewel grocery stores. Uh, and then, uh, the most interesting work that he created was focusing on the sort of abandoned and empty lots, kind of imagining in sort of projecting how much square feet, how many kind of sort of what kind of size, what kind of nature of a store he's imagining that could be in the place of these empty vacant lots. Uh, what kind of uh, building, what kind of establishment, what kind of uh, sort of a grocery store can exist in these places. So he did these architectural kind of calculations and created these works that make us think about what may happen in these empty lots in the future. Uh, and I, th I thought that was a very interesting way of thinking about uh, using art uh, to kind of not only document, but also to project, to imagine. Uh, and that was one of the more successful sort of uh, uh, sets of work that came out of this particular project. He also focused on uh, these silos or grain containers. And it's something that we found through our research kind of quite amusing and interesting that right in the middle of these food deserts, there were these gigantic storages of food. Uh, of course, not edible, uh, but he found that an interesting combination where uh, almost every destination, every place that we went on the map in these three counties, uh, there were plenty of uh, sort of storages of food uh, connected uh, via train tracks, but uh, uh, these basically were in the center of uh, food deserts. Uh, after coming back from the trip, uh, students continued making work in response to their experience to uh, sort of going to these places. Uh, and Julia especially created an interesting set of images uh, focusing on the things that were plentiful, were easy to find in the food deserts. Uh, she actually uh, purchased uh, several uh, items uh, on the trip, and then she created these uh, images that uh, are reminiscent of uh, this archaeological images of specimens uh, from from a long lost world. Uh, and she created these uh, in that in that vein with uh, with a strip of uh, scale at the bottom. Uh, after uh, we came back uh, from this trip. Uh, so it was interesting that students continued to uh, reflect on their experience, their research. Uh, so it was not just uh, that they made images during the, you know, the short weekend trip, uh, and they uh, sort of continued to sort of wrestle with these uh, issues and ideas that they had researched regarding food deserts and food inaccessibility. Uh, lastly, I would like to certainly thank uh, the people who made the, the project so far possible. Uh, we had uh, grants uh, and some funding uh, from uh, several institutions, and especially we were really uh, happy to receive the Kansas Creative Arts Industries Commission grant uh, in the past, as well as uh, this project has been generously supported by the art department as well as the journalism department at Kansas State. Uh, 
with that i uh, would like to stop my presentation and open up for any questions thank you so much um it was nice to see the images up big on the on the on the screen are there any um questions or comments yes senator bowers it's your district <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, this is Senate District 36, Shree. I'm not sure if you knew that. It's uh, part of 13 counties that represent that, that district. But I, I did want to mention to the committee, it is well known in the district that our farmers do help the schools. Uh, perhaps they'll donate beef to the schools and are, is processed through our local processing firms. You haven't been in rural Kansas unless you go to a grocery store that's around a square. That's dual grocery with a park in the middle. Certainly you see high tunnels. It's a way our farmers continue to operate year round. Cuba has a, a rockathon for a whole week, two rocking chairs rock 24 hours solid that they're known for worldwide. And it's not uncommon to see senior citizen centers as a gathering point where the cards are being played too. And then uh, if you are on 36 Highway, the depot market is very, very hard to drive by. And that's at Cortland when you pass through. And you right now there's many pumpkins out there too. So if I, I can put a plug in for Senate District 36 to come through now would be a very good time with the trees turning colors. So I'm, I'm very impressed with your presentation, Shri, and um, very much would be thrilled to see the photos of the district and the capital too. But thank you, Madam Chair. Any other comments? I have, if you could be very specific, how long do you want this up in the Capitol? I think uh, at one time you talked about two to four weeks. Is that still correct? Uh, yes, I think a, a typical exhibition uh, based on, of course, traffic, but I think at least two weeks and four weeks will be the maximum. Okay. Um, Frank, do you, is there any logistic things? Uh, my understanding is these could sit on easels. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, so these, he, uh, these prints are basically mounted on hard board. And so they are, uh, they're ready to be hung if necessary, or they can be on easels as well. Do you have any questions about that, Frank? Not about that specific item, but you also mentioned uh, short documentaries. That would lead me to ask the question, is there a video component? Is there technical support? What other items are gonna be required of facilities and who would be maintaining these during the two to four week period? So uh, what I can, uh, from the art department, what I can certainly uh, provide is, uh, we can have a flat screen television uh, on a loop that can show the documentaries if there is space available for that. Uh, but those are uh, separate. They are also available online. Uh, so we can provide links instead if that is cumbersome, if that's not possible, uh, because we also have a YouTube channel with these documentaries already available online. Um, we would need, if this passes, we would need to work with you on the specifics and um, since Frank is in charge of facilities, would you take the lead on that, on this, if, if we do this? Okay. Um, any other? Yes, Frank. I do have a question. Um, because this came before this board, what constitutes a temporary exhibit over scheduling event space for a period of two to three weeks to set up a temporary? And what precedent has been set for other worthwhile clauses? Um, is there a history? Because in approving something like this, I believe we're opening that door for other causes, national causes, state causes, and so forth. So I just wanted to put that out for a point of conversation. I will just um, speak for what I thought in or originally corresponding with them when they requested this. Um, that it is under our jurisdiction to also take care of, according to the legislation, temporary exhibits. But I don't see this as an event-oriented exhibit. So I see this as a pure exhibit. Um, so it's not in connection with an event of a particular cause. I mean, obviously, this has a cause embedded in it, but it is the artwork of the students at K-State. 
uh, learning about food deserts in this case is, and you're shaking your head, so I'm on the right track, I assume, there. Um, and so I saw that as, this is the first temporary that's actually come requested uh, through the committee. Um, and I went back and read all the legislation, and the way I read it, it does say that it includes temporary exhibits. I think when, it's re when it comes through the event um, scheduling, I see that as a separate thing. So that's why I brought it before here. Follow up to that as far as an exact location. Are we talking there in the visitor center? Um, again, this has to do with scheduling other events, how we use the space, uh, appropriate areas for these types of uh, temporary events. I think we work that out with the other schedule that you have going on with, with the, I think we'll have to, you're flexible on the dates, correct? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. So there's flexibility here. So I think that at least you and I need to talk, Frank, about where this would fit. Uh, could you tell us how many panels there are again? Uh, we have close to, meaning it's a range. We, we can exhibit uh, from anywhere from 20 to 30 panels. Uh, based on the available space, based on the resources, we can curate. Uh, and of course, we can go through the committee in order to finalize which exactly images can go there. Uh, but there is flexibility in terms of which panels and how many can go. Uh, and I, I would like to add one more thing. Each, each image is not just all by itself. Uh, there is a, a detailed caption that explains what that image is and how it is significant or how it relates to uh, the idea uh, behind the project. And you would leave the location up to us. You'd be okay Correct. with that? Yes. Does that work for you, Frank? Okay. Did that answer your question? Okay. Um, so are we ready to vote or, oh no, Tim. Uh, this is more for you, Jenny. Um, would the motion have to require the dates that we are recommending or is that something that you would work out offline? The date that... I don't, I don't see anything in the legislation. I, what I see is different about this is that it's not like a permanent installation, so it doesn't need legislation. I think we just work it out when it fits in to the current schedule um, and works for K-State, and um, then we set the date. So I would think the motion just needs that we approve it as a temporary exhibit in the Capitol. And um, if it's okay with the team, I will say, Frank and I will work it out based on, on space usage that's already committed on what space is open. So yes. that would dictate the dates? That would dictate so, the dates. So for, for what it's worth, and you guys will work this out, um, I do think it would be nice that if this is approved that um, this is done in a way that maybe the first, uh, if this is a four-week situation, the first three weeks would be done before the legislative session which would be over the um, holidays, which I think will have certain traffic. This issue is um, important during the holiday season. And then maybe overlap into the first week of the legislative session so they could get um, the last week of their exhibit would get plenty of um, uh, exposure. So you're recommending... I, 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 that's just my opinion. Over the you holiday guys, season while and... You the... guys, while you guys work it out, that's, that would be... It depends on what's on the schedule. A uh, follow-up question for the present presenter. Um, this is all existing exhibit that's currently on display at KSU in the gallery or stuff that will be developed over this semester. Um, what is the time frame for would take you to put everything together and present it? Uh, so this is uh, work that is already done and prepared. It is not on exhibition currently. It has been in the past at Alma as well as in K-State. Uh, it is in the storage right now, so technically it can be up on the walls next week. Thank you. So my other comment, obviously, we're still kind of in a state of flux here as far as the amount of traffic we're getting, public tours and so forth, so that might want to be taken into consideration too. And I understand Tim's point about prior to session. Um, I think we just re need to remain flexible yes. um, in that regard. So. I would think the process, if approved, is that I can work with Frank and the three of us could have a conversation 
um, so we can make sure this works for you at K-State. We can present some options to you where there is time and, and open. Does that work for you? Absolutely. K-State, yeah. okay. Yes. Um, Jenny, I would just ask that you maybe include Tom Day in yes. those discussions yes, as well. Absolutely. Since, I mean, building space is a kind of a collaborative okay. effort with the D of A and LAS. So. That's a very good point. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anything else? Are we ready to vote? Do I have a motion? I, I am, I'm very happy to make the motion. I, I would move that we would approve K-State's, K-State University's request to display their Hunger Heartland Temporary Exhibit with flexible dates, working with staff and with our chairwoman to put, pull together the details for us. And I'll second it. Okay. Second, we have a, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll be in touch with you, okay? Thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity, and I think it's, this will be very, very exciting for students. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for your good work with the students. They need thank good you. mentors. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> okay. What? You're moving right along. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Has anything changed, Heather? Are we ready to move move on? I'm I'm shuffling too much. Well, I assume you're with the the suffrage, um, and I seen you online. We had a a Zoom meeting or a, a, a Teams meeting. I don't remember which it was. And so I welcome you to um, the podium. And would you state your name, please? Well, I'm uh, Marlene Merrill. Okay, you are Marlene. Okay, and, thank you. Um, I have with me Seal King and Olivia Higdon. Um, and we're representing the League of Women Voters of Kansas, as well as the American Association of University Women. And this committee kind of came together as a result of... Uh, our work uh, to uh, celebrate the, the passage of the 19th Amendment, which was in 2020. And uh, there were, there were um, exhibit materials that were on display across the state. And the little brochure that you, you have is kind of the result of, of that, those displays. And so after that period of, of uh, celebration, uh, we began to have conversations about, um, well, the importance of being able to educate people more in depth in a more permanent way about important Kansas women. And uh, I would see the next slide, please. Um, being able to honor Kansas women, particularly women uh, across the state who worked to be able to get the vote for all of us that we all enjoy today. Um, as we talked about commemorative art, um, we wanted to evoke inspiration. We wanted to evoke curiosity to be able to find out more. We wanted to pass our values, um, the things that we value as Kansas, Kansans as, and as women on to future generations. And we wanted very much to have a permanent memorial to commemorate the women who had an impact statewide, um, as well as nationally, nationally in, some, in some cases. So um, th that is uh, kind of the background and the purpose for why we got together uh, with the art. Um, next slide, please. I'm going to go through these rather quickly. Um, you may be familiar with some of these women and some of these images, and uh, you may not be. Uh, but the reason that we pulled this together uh, originally is that we didn't know uh, how artists across the state would be familiar with these images. And so this is to 
kind of struck, struck up their curiosity. Um, so uh, Clarina Nichols and um, uh, Carrie Ellingson Hughes are, I think are fairly well known. Um, and I'm not really gonna try to educate all of you about this, but just as to strike up your curiosity. Um, uh, Lori Johns was from Salina. And um, as a journalist and an organizer, she really worked with people across the state with regard to um, uh, getting suffrage passed. Next slide. Connie, uh, uh, Mamie Dillard, um, really worked as an educator. And um, one of the students that she had was Langston Hughes. And uh, so she had an impact on that. Next slide. Lelia Monroe uh, was for Marquini. And originally, uh, she was a school teacher, but then went on to serve on the Kansas Supreme Court. Next slide, please. Mimi Grinstead uh, was elected to the Kansas House of Representatives in 1918, and she was the first woman to serve on, uh, in the legislature. Next slide. Um, as we undertake, we really thought this would be, or what we're proposing, is a cooperative venture between our committee and, and your committee. Um, we have not sent out proposals uh, but we obviously have developed our thoughts about what would be in a request for proposals. And we would like it to be a Kansas artist. And so we would be working with the Kansas Creative Arts, I may have the name of the, uh, uh, wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peter. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, we would use their mailing list and uh, also, um, um, I'm sure that's pretty comprehensive, but you know, members have been suggesting names too. Um, but the criteria would reflect, uh, we want it to reflect uh, whatever the object of art is to reflect the diversity of women, to be able to in some way promote public education, have artistic criteria, uh, quality, be innovative, um, be, have the, uh, some professional art experience, and then also to be able to provide sensitivity to the site. And um, I know we're asking artists to pro propose art when we don't really have a site, so to speak, but um, I think they need to be cognizant that this would be in the state capitol, this would be representing all of us in all of Kansas. So um, when I talk about sensitivity, that's kind of what I mean when I speak uh, to that. Um, next slide. Um, uh, also, to kind of give you a, an orientation, and, and you know, as the committee began its work, we actually looked at different pieces of art. Um, and I'm not suggesting that any of these be what we select. It's really to give you an idea of what other states have done um, to commemorate women's suffrage. And so in our mind, in the committee's mind, art could be a painting, it could be stained glass, it could be a metal type structure, or it could be uh, an actual um, um, sculpture. And so this is some examples. Um, I think the important thing is that we want the art piece to represent women who inspire us today and will inspire us in the, in the future. And so the next slide um, is an example of a painting. Uh, the next slide is an example of a, kind of a, a, a monument that is more descriptive. Um, next slide. And this one is from the state of Tennessee, and it's the monument that they put up in um, their state capitol, which commemorates suffrage. And next slide. Um, this one, I believe, is, if I remember correctly, is from New York, and it, pro it provides a different type of an image of, of women's suffrage. And then the, uh, uh, the next slide um, is an example of, of kind of what I would call a traditional kind of sculpture. 
And then uh, the next slide um, is also a traditional sculpture, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's a really neat grouping because it really reflects diversity in a way that um, you don't always see. And then the last one um, is Minnesota's, and it, it's really kind of uh, an entrance way to a kind of a park. So it could be, uh, I mean, it could be something like this. Um, it wasn't my intent to send these kinds of things to artists, but more the images of the women and the criteria and then to develop um, what we want uh, based on that. Um, next slide, please. Um, we have the funding for our project is a combination of grant funding and donations. Um, I mentioned our uh, commemorative celebration, and we did receive grant, some grant funding for that. We had some funds left over, and, so, and we also have a donor that has uh, donated some funds. Um, so uh, that, uh, and, and we're not opposed to fundraising to, to, to uh, actually have more money. Uh, the budget includes the cost of the art, um, which uh, at the present time would be roughly around 30,000 that we could provide. And then we have four to 5,000 left for installation costs and maintenance uh, for the art to be able to be maintained at the Capitol. And um, certainly our, while this is a rough outline, we're certainly willing to work with you in terms of adjustments if if that isn't um, uh, sufficient. Next time, uh, the timeline. Um, the art celebrates the centennial of the 19th Amendment. Um, and, you know, granted, the pandemic kind of put a lot of things kind of on hold. Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do something permanent to celebrate this really important event. And um, to have it on view for citizens uh, to be able to look at, ask questions, learn about. Our timeline is, is flexible, but our goal is to have a dedication in approximately two years. Um, I mean, we want to keep it somewhat close to the uh, 2020, uh, but again, it, it, is, it is flexible uh, for us. Um, in my last slides, are, I, I know you can ask me questions, but the last slides were questions that I had of you, um, and I'd be happy to um, have answer your questions first. When you talk sure. about grant funding that you have, is there kind of a timeline on that? Are you going to lose the money if you don't use it by a certain time? No, there isn't. Um, uh, we've been we've uh, been in communication with the donor, and um, he's very flexible. Um, he originally gave the money to honor his mother, and that is what he really still wants us to be able to do, not her specifically, but in honor uh, of, of her work and her life. Um, and the other funding is uh, what was left over from what the league celebrations on the commemoration. Um, so it's a combination. And... Um, I mean, I think it's a good start. It's a generous start, and it may be sufficient. As I looked at art, um, you know, what artists call describe for art, uh, and how art costs is a very subjective uh, thing. And so, um, I think that we have a good place to start. Any other questions from the committee? Yes. yes. Right. Well, the whole budget is around thirty-five thousand, um, so that would uh, leave approximately five thousand uh, in terms of installation, and and these are rough estimates, sir. Um, Oh, 
Oh, they would be. You're absolutely correct. Um, I, my intention in showing those pictures is to kind of show you what other people have done, not necessarily what we could do. Um, yes, I think something, and, and in our request is we really would like to have something within the Capitol building. And so I think you're, we're talking significantly smaller than anything that, that I showed you as just as examples. Um, it, um, it's interesting on, on the internet, you know, the, the really big flashy things um, get uh, distributed and shown, but there is a lot of good quality art that doesn't have to be gigantic. It, it can be a smaller. So obviously with our budget, we're not talking big and grandiose. We're really talking something that is more, um, well, more, inter more internal, more, more suitable perhaps to, um, as, as you go through the Capitol or go through a space that it, it's, um, kind of on the side, it's not as big as, say, the John Brown, but it is, you know, maybe, I don't know, you know, maybe three feet high or whatever. Um, but um, uh, all we can do it, when we do a request for proposals and we get that finalized is to see what artists will, will produce. And, um, you know, if, if it comes back that, you know, everybody says, oh, well, you know, we can't afford to do it for this amount of money, or this is what we can afford to provide you for this amount of money, it still remains up to the committee. And if, it, if, if there are members of your committee with our, working with our committee, um, we uh, have the option of saying, no, we don't like anything that's been proposed or we don't feel it's appropriate. And so we will either, um, you know, rework the proposal or put much more effort into funding if that's what we end up needing to do. I, a, I was going to ask you a quick question, but so you could answer it with whatever you want to say, Dr. Wynn. Um, okay, but when we, when, we start, when we started with the Brown v. Board mural, did we have an exact figure? I can't remember because yeah. you were leading at that time. So we didn't. So did we get that from the artist? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they had to, then they had to scramble to raise the funds. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Um, I just need a an understanding. Are the six images? It's just examples to inform us women existed, or yes, are, okay. that's exactly the intent. Um, you know. Um, it, it always amazes me how little knowledge that um, students today know about, um, well, anything past <laughs> the last couple of years. Um, but in particular, how little knowledge people seem to have of women and women who worked in um, uh, I, I think we owe it to the future uh, not to let that, um, the work of the past hundred years be kind of relegated to a footnote or not even a footnote. Um, I, so I, the, the women, we, we, it is, was never our intent to say, oh, you need to do, you know, this picture of Mamie Dillard or, you know, the art needs to incorporate um, her image. That is not our intent at all, and I think in the um, in the description for the RFP, um, one would think that as an artist, and, and this may be maybe you could help me with this a little bit, Peter, um, is that um, they may not know which women were important, um, and by giving them some names. Um, they could go back and look at that um, and then maybe learn a little bit about it and then decide, oh, this is inspiring me then to create uh, this. And so that, that's our purpose um, in that. And, you know, if you, if you all thought that that was not necessary, 
it would it would need to be in the RFP. Um, it, it's our suggestion that we do that because we, I don't, and the rest of the committee I think would agree. We don't think that many people even know of any of these women. Yes, but the focus is suffragettes. Yes, okay. yes, um, and and all of the women that I showed you were important in Kansas history, and they all were suffragettes. They all did different things, and they ended up in their life doing maybe different things, um, but they all worked uh, uh, in the cause for women. Any other? Yes, Peter. Oh, no, Peter. Yeah, I just had a quick question kind of about process, because it does strike me as being similar to the Brown v. Board, um, and sort of, I wasn't there when that first started, so, because I think it would be helpful, especially for an artist, to have an idea you know, where this might go. And I'm, I'm guessing that that's going to be, there's going to be some, some, um, you know, some, some dictates uh, as to where that artwork could go and what that are, there are going to be some strictures around that that I'm guessing that are going to come from this committee or whatever. Um, so it would be helpful, I think, to know that uh, even before you get to the RFP process. So that way the artist is reacting to something a little more concrete as to what is possible. Yes, I, I think that's a good point. Uh, let's deal with that in, in a big bundle. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Because I do want to say that when I talk to you all, I encourage them to come here early rather than to come with a full-blown, this is the artwork we want to put in to, because I thought this is much more like the Brown v. Board where this committee is going to have to be involved in a lot of decision making, if it's going to be a major, even if it's smaller, part mm -hmm. of the um, capital, the interior of the capital. Because I, my understanding from talking to you too is you really do want it on the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and I think if I possible. Think, yeah. I think given Kansas's prominence in this movement, it is something yes. that you know is on the same stature and should be memorialized yeah. uh, in the capital. So yeah. I just wanted to point out I did encourage them to come early so that we could have this dialogue. Who was, oh, Sharon. Well, I just had a comment. I appreciate what you said about how we don't know, or <laughs> I, I didn't know. I just finished reading a book that talked a lot about this issue. It was, I think the name of the book was Women Who Step Out of Line. Anyway, it was interesting how many Native American women were involved because they had background in mm -hmm. uh, this kind of thing. So there are lots of Native American women who also stepped forward. So that's all I wanted to say. Before I suggest how we might proceed, I'm going to give you some options. Um, did anyone else have a comment or question? Did you have one? Thank you, okay. Madam Chair. Are we going to talk strategic like locations in the Capitol? Uh, I'm I'm not sure what is the historical museum's exhibit space and what's available to us to propose. Do you have ideas of what, how you would like to see that look? Or? No, that's what I'm. Um, that's why I invited them to come to this meeting because I felt that we need to know if we're interested in proceeding with this topic. And then how we work this out, much the way we did with Brown v. Board, in partnership with the committee, with your committee. And so it seemed like a much bigger project than some of the other things that come before us that are memorials um, that are very different, like what we saw earlier this morning. So if I was wrong, it was my fault, not theirs. <laughs> but it seemed to me that this was big enough. It has so many components. And I would agree with Peter that we would get a better selection of possible art pieces if we narrowed it some to where it was going to be in the building and that we had legislative support ultimately. Because if you think back on some of the other, we're going to talk about one that didn't get completed this afternoon, and that's the first Kansas uh, Colored Infantry, is that um, it would it, it, it is a process. <laughs> it is a process that isn't one way either way. It, it works better that way if we're putting something permanent in. And um, so that is that's why I recommended they go ahead and present their idea and their wants here. So yes, did you have something, Tim? Yeah, so. <clears throat> We use the model of Brown v. Board. <clears throat> we would just need to uh, make a recommendation that we're interested in this. We would go forward with legislation 
and then we would talk placement before as we're um, building the RFP, right? Because I remember we had a number of discussions while we were building the RFP on the different locations on Brown v. Board mm -hmm. and the State House, and then we voted on ultimately two mm -hmm. um, to give the artists uh, an opportunity to um, render their their model based on those two locations. Zach, Zach. Yes, and you probably should weigh in on this too. <laughs> but I want to, um, and I might need your help on this in terms of the law, but I think what the law on Brown Bee Board said was that we will do this with in conjunction with the Capital Preservation Committee. So we were given not the funding or not the funding ability to do that, that would have to be you all, but that we were given uh, the charge to get this done is what we were through the legislation, is my remembrance of that. Does that sound correct? Yeah, that's correct. The statute says the Capital Preservation Committee shall develop plans to place it mural for, that was for Brown v. Board, but yeah. And we also had partners in that from the communities. So, uh, but we were given the charge to work it through the process. Mm -hmm. So I, yes, what you're saying is correct. So if I might ask, then this piece of legislation would really be proposed before we actually know what the art is. Okay. And why I suggested you come here to have this discussion is then we knew we had the support of the legislature. It would be difficult not only for you and us, but the artists who submit if we don't have an end promise from the legislature to complete this project. So since there's multiple partners in this. I understand. It just seems, I mean, two years seems fast <laughs> um, compared to what we've done before, but certainly, getting substantially ahead on it is, um, I mean, this is a legacy piece is the way I see what you, um, I had the opportunity to have a conversation with them before this meeting. So um, it's a legacy piece for people to remember that there were women before us who really fought and demanded that we have this right. And so, um, so I think the process is a little bit squishy at this point, but I hate to go too far. That's why I said I hate to have you ask artists to put effort in when it's their living, mm -hmm. when we're not having a real competition yet because we don't have permission to do this. I agree. Does that make sense from a legislative staff standpoint? Well, I think also figuring out, like, is it... 3D or is it right. 3D? I mean, is it a mural or a statue that's going to be? A, yes. Like, yes. Different. Dr. Wynn. And, and thank you. And, and Tim did describe the process that was a little bit longer than two years. Um, but it was clearly a mural. And this is, this is the, for lack of a better word, the wild card. But it is significant. And so, um, you know, how you write the legislation with it being such, such an open-ended piece is, 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 I don't have a problem with it, but um, when questions come up, you know, what is the answer? I'd say, when questions come up on the floor, what is the answer? Right. And, and it seems to me that if, there's, there's several ways we could do this. We could say, we can start with, do we like this idea? And be very simple. Then, then we go to the next step, then what, are, what is our process? And what is the process this committee we're here to represent the first step of this process um, for the legislature. Um, they created us to funnel things to them. And so then what do we need that legislation to say? And some things could be decided later, but you're right. In the past, we've always knew it was going to be a mural or a sculpture or a memorial. We, it wasn't quite, um, so there, but we could do this in steps. <laughs> So I wonder if we should call for a motion first, if somebody would like to propose it, um, that we are interested in the topic. Let's just deal with the topic and then it deserves to be celebrated in the Capitol. 
I mean, let's just establish first that this committee likes the idea of doing something for women's suffrage. Yes. Does it need to be inside the Capitol or would we be open to having it on the Capitol? I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking if like some of those examples were nice and they're, but they may be more appropriate for outside and that may be a, a better way to do it. I just didn't know if we wanted to, you know, hold, hem ourselves in to the inside. I'm gonna defer to our conferee because they have a specific opinion. I sure. Well, our, our preference would be to have it in the Capitol simply because there is a great deal more traffic um, that goes through the through the building, and so it would be more visible. But we are very flexible, um, and if you know you all feel like it needs to be strictly outside, then that's the way we would write the the RFP. I mean, I think it. I think from an artist standpoint, it's important to know whether I'm working on a piece that's going to be inside as opposed to a piece that's going to be outside. Um, and um, the other uh, factor that I think played in our conversations as a committee is that um, our budget is um, not, not of the size <laughs> to, to really have something really big that would be visible on the outside. I mean, that, I, mean um, I know art, the cost of art really val it varies, but obviously the bigger you get, the more expensive it, it is. Um, so that kind of played in our decision. But we are flexible. If, if this committee says that, yes, we like this idea, but it has to be outside, then that's the direction that we will go. I mean, to, to, to us, it's very important that we are able to commemorate and celebrate um, the work of women in Kansas. Yeah, no, 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 for, for sure. I didn't know if having it inside would basically mean that it's a mural. I mean, it, it sort of would relegate it, I mean, not relegate it, but that it would basically mean that it's a mural. And if at this point we would want to structure that at this juncture or have that you know, be, be open. Peter, would it have to be a mural? I mean, that's it's right. okay if, that's, what, if that's what you decide. No, but my no. image is that it could be a statue. It in, be a in, statue in the... Okay. In the I mean, I suppose it could be anything that doesn't block traffic, <laughs> right. but still is, inspires people. So it, it, I suppose there's great flexibility in that. Um, Tim, you had something, and then Senator Bowers, and did I see Frank? So we'll go one, two, three. Are you familiar with the, um, the Eisenhower statue down in the visitor center? Have you seen that? about this big. I believe I have, yes. Right, it, it's on a, it's on a, on a pedestal. pedestal. Uh -huh. uh, is, that, is that a sufficient? Yes, it, it would be. I mean, that's a good example of, of what could, have, could be created. There's a, there's a lot of high, uh, high traffic corners on the first floor that would uh, lend themselves to that. It was a perfect permanent place for a, a statue like that. I was just wondering if you'd seen it. And if, if yes, you, it, if like that. We, I do. I, um, and I'd be happy to send that image to the rest of the committee so that they could look at it too. Thank you, Senator. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I think I have more of a procedural question here. When, when do we meet next? Are we allowed one meeting a year or can we meet during the legislature? And where I'm going with that, I wonder if you should have a, subcommittee that irons out some of these details and brings it back to all of us with options, working with our folks here and then internally with Frank and you with the museum on spaces that could be available. And But I'm happy to do whatever the committee likes if we want to propose a bill today, but I'm wondering if the subcommittee can narrow it down and propose a language working within our limitations. That's just a thought I have. We can meet up to four times a year, and I just have to request those meetings. I have to keep making sure I read the, I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> but I'm reading the law, right? <laughs> That's the way I read the law. And so we can meet more. We just have traditionally, if we're entering into, when we started Brown v. Board, there were more meetings. When we're in a big 
when we have a big project, we have more meetings. When we're in a transition period, we have less meetings. So I, it's been the tradition of this committee. So um, yes, there was, Frank had a comment. Just following up, I guess, so in response to today's presentation, would it be appropriate for this committee to say that we are supportive of our work inside the building? I am not comfortable at this point with something external. Um, I echo some of the other comments. The Eisenhower outside was hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I want to be realistic and sensitive to your budget and your fundraising efforts. I think we need to give you a little bit more guidance in order for you to be successful in that taking those next steps. Um, by maybe limiting that, I think your recommendation or example is a good one too, uh, that there's a lot of options inside the building. So I don't know if that would be an appropriate uh, comment for our motion. No hand there. Okay. Um, it, how about if we start with a motion? Could, do you want to make a motion? You started to, you mm -hmm. had sort of a motion there. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> could, you, could we turn that into a motion of the, whether we are, want to go ahead working together with this with, uh, with the, and with the idea of a, appointing a subcommittee to bring back to this group to meet and, and so we wouldn't go for legislation necessarily yet. Is that, I keep turning to him because he's legal. <laughs> Is that the right way to turn? Because you're our, you're our legal. Uh, okay, so yes, that would work. So yes, so, go for it. All right. So my motion would be for this committee to recommend this project with more study through a subcommittee and then meet with the full committee with the options that are in front of us, inside or outside. That would be my motion, basically. We can perfect that, too, with, if however we like. That this committee supports this process, and we would iron out the details together with the subcommittee and as a full committee. Is there a second? Who did it first? Yeah. Larry? Okay, Larry's the second. And so any other discussion? Yes, Representative Wynn. With a two-year um, target date, you want a timeline on that motion? I'm fine with the timeline, too. Two years is fine. No, if, no, 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 or, no. Two years is their end date. What would... Whatever timeline I'm flexible on, any, do you want an end date? Do no. you, I'd leave it open. Do you want that, whatever that you propose, meet before session starts next month or what? Uh, Representative, I, I don't have any, really a strong opinion on that. Getting back together during legislature, leg, legislature time makes sense to me that we're all in the building if we can find a lunch date. I would say more sooner than later. If you want a response, of course, because I'm saying she's looking at two years. This is not an easy process. But you're flexible if it's not two years. We correct? are flexible. Okay. We are flexible, but I do uh, understand what uh, Representative Wynn is, is saying that <clears throat> if we could work out some of the details sooner, you know, within a month or two, um, that then we would be in a position to send out a request for proposals. Um, yeah, the timeline is flexible. I mean, we don't have any date that we really want. It's just that uh, when we talked about timelines, um, you know, the, you know, the further the way you get from the celebration of the 19th Amendment, it, it, really kind of loses some of its power. Um, so um, that's, that's the only... Suffrage never loses its power. <laughs> well, thank you. As somebody in the history field, <laughs> never. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't let that die. Uh, yes, Will. Yes. Would you amend your... Absolutely. Do you have an, can you read us the amendment? Is it, in, not the amendment, can you read us the, what we're voting on? Sure, it can be a team effort. Okay, so what I have in my notes is to recommend the project with more study through a subcommittee process, 
that would report back to the full committee before the end of the year. Does that get what you want? Does that get what you want? Yes. Sounds good. Okay, yes. Uh, Madam Chair, if I recall correctly, the Legislative Coordinating Council authorized one day, and yes, the, co the committee will likely be meeting again in the coming weeks, so I'd recommend a, a request go in as soon as possible. Um, the other thing I was going to ask was, how much was the Brown Board Education Mural? It was a lot. Do you remember, Frank? I want to say 200 and something thousand. I think it, I think it was in the 200,000 range. Is that where we're, I guess the subcommittee will determine what we're shooting for in terms of goals. But um, on the subcommittee, how are we going to determine membership? Um, we're going to appoint it at this meeting. OK. OK, if we vote yes on this. OK. Or do you have another a better idea? <laughs> Are you trying to get in or out? He should share. Okay. Um, so um, yes, I have that request. I would need to request another meeting. Um, we have never determined. For those who have legal, whether we can meet during session. And that's always been an issue that's never really been answered the time I've been on the committee. And this, so can we meet during session? Um, uh, the statute's silent on it. It just says you can meet up to four times a year, and that's really the just only. Just keep requesting it is what I should do. You will put, yeah, we can do that. Okay, so we have a motion. Did we have a, who seconded it? Larry did. Okay, all those in favor, any more discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? It passed, so that's a big milestone. Thank you. That's Thank just where you very I wanted much. to get today, is that we have, okay. I just uh, have a question. Yes, go ahead. So do you have to request the subcommittee to meet? No, we've never had to do that in the past. Do we? Yes, traditionally, any committee that's authorized by the Legislative Coordinating Council has to submit a request as well. The subcommittee? Correct. Like on criminal justice reform, they have, also, they have subcommittees, and they've all had to request. So technically, you'd request two days, um, one for the full committee and one for the uh, subcommittee. Thank you very much for that clarification. You have different rules than we have in the executive branch where I'm from, so... Okay, I, you just have to remind me of the rules, <laughs> those of you in the legislature, because it's a whole different. Um, I will volunteer to be on that committee to continue the dialogue. I am going to draft Frank to some degree because of facilities, at least some kind of, would you be willing to do that, Frank? Because of facilities, because we, being the historical society and currently the chair of this committee, I think I should help. And so Dr. Wynn will be part of that. Anybody else? And Peter, you should be part of it. I was, you were my next, my, my next convert because of your, your job. And so, yes, go ahead. You I, want in, don't you? Yeah, I just, no, I, I just want to say I, um, <laughs> I appreciate the House representative um, being on it as well. I like to see the Senate have some representation of some kind. So if Senator Bowers would be willing to serve. Um, I know you're really busy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have Representative Wynn, <laughs> Senator Bowers, me, Peter, and Frank. And who is that guy in there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that will be our subcommittee. So our charge is to meet before Christmas, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least. So how about, um, yes, Frank? Is there anything specific we're asking prior to that meeting so we can be most productive in that discussion? Well, let's talk about that next. My question is, um, is, do one of you want to chair the subcommittee? Is that me? Okay, I'll chair the subcommittee. Okay. You've started the conversation. Okay, and um, you are welcome to be present when we are talking. So we will notify you. Thank you. Um, so whoever wants to come can come participate in that. Um, I will send out some dates to that committee. Um, have, can you still work with us on this, oh, yeah. on the subcommittee? Okay. 
Heather will help us. Because <laughs> I know you all have as full a schedule as I do and, and yeah, another meeting kind of. Uh, but I think this is a better process to get more spe specificity mm -hmm. so that we know what we're ask actually asking artists for mm -hmm. and things like that. So we will, we will meet before the holiday, before the holiday seasons at the end of the year. So we have November. So it'll probably be in November. Is that okay for those of you that are, does that interfere with anything legislatively for any, either of you? Okay, because the other three of us are always in Topeka. So um, we'll try to work around the two of your schedule. Thank you for volunteering. We will let you know when that is, and I think we would move ahead at this time. Uh, yes. Kim. With Brown v. Board? Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I think we can actually, yes, that's what I was thinking through. We want to make this a, a forward moving process that is transparent. I would say transparency too, so everybody knows. I think that the, we can through writing right back to the rest of you so you have something to review before we meet again about a process and processes where we'll, we'll propose some options and then the committee can pick that. Um, I think at this point, we should appreciate the committee for moving forward on this topic. It is, there aren't a lot of statues that, or um, artwork in the country that do commemorate women. So we're in, a, we're in a great minority there. So that's my one little editorial that I didn't have to say. So um, I'll say it after the fact and say thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you very much, committee, for your support. Yeah. And, um, our will, the willingness to work with us to go forward. Thank you. And I'm going to make you the person, you're welcome to bring other people, but I, I will keep in contact. Heather will, will keep in contact with you. Uh, and um, Heather and I will work out how to move ahead on this. And um, we'll talk practical too. So there's nothing, what from your standpoint, Frank, we need to figure out what spaces really are, because you're more aware of traffic flow um, we do need to include Tom Day in this discussion, so I think we should add him to this committee, even though he's not on the committee, because technically he is the one by statute, his position implements. Um, in the past, it sort of has fallen back on the committee, but I think we need to bring him in earlier. Doesn't it say that the legislative... Yeah, any uh, recommendations that are approved by this committee then get implemented by legislative administrative services. Yeah, and so I think the sooner we could bring him in, the better. Um, so if you'd make a note of that, that is that okay with you? Um, uh, so, because this committee as a committee can only handle so much of the weight. We're not in the building every day. <laughs> so even you are not in the building every day. So um, it, it will be helpful to have somebody that is. So yes, Frank. So then just, I guess, point of clarity for my sake, the committee will set some parameters and some guidelines by which the group will then develop more information. We're not designing, we are not putting this thing together. We're not figuring out the funding mechanism. Uh, we're we're approving what eventually will be put forward. So we are approving. We're coming up with what the process is going to be. Okay, for the full committee. Yes. Yeah, and how we would move forward. That's why we need to include Tom Day in it. I think. Um, so, um, will s Heather will bug me to, to get some dates. It's a hard time of year to do get everybody together, but. If you two know you're coming to Topeka, mm -hmm. if you would let us know, mm -hmm. since the rest of us are in Topeka, mm -hmm. let us know. We'll try to work around your schedules. Um, 
that that's a great movement forward. I hope you all appreciate that. And and you are welcome to be part of these discussions. But at this point, it will be a partnership. So we will say, yeah, this worked for us before. So let's just try to keep in this vein. I think that's what Tim's saying is that um, let's make sure this is doable. We learn from our own mistakes in the past um, in that it was, because this committee is relatively new when you talk about history um, compared to a lot of other committees. And so um, we've, been in, we've been here for a while, but we haven't been here forever. So, and we were created to make this process smoother ultimately. So um, we're, get, we're getting the hang of it. We, we've learned from some of our mistakes. So we will move forward. We will be in touch. We will give you as much notice as we can of when we're going to meet. Um, do we have to meet back here? We can, you can, we can meet back in the Capitol or what? what if we're a subcommittee, does that constitute like it's always a public meeting? Yeah, I, I would follow the normal procedures for, for a regular committee meeting as well. Okay. So um, we'll be doing something like this. <laughs> okay, any other last comments anybody wants to make on this? Okay, congratulations, and we'll be seeing you again, some of us. So we'll work forward, we'll be in touch. My suggestion is, since it is, is that clock correct? It, it, so it's just a little bit after 11. Do you wanna go through this and try to get out and not work all day if we can? Does that, does that screw up anybody's schedule? Okay, then um, do you want a little break or right now, like five minute break? Or should we just keep going? Okay, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> okay. the. Um, I'm the next on the agenda after lunch, and that was, these are all things we have talked about as a committee in the past, and we need to either deal with them, or we need to have a, thanks again for coming in. Thank you. Um, so let's start with the first Kansas colored mural, and that is the term that was used to describe this regiment. Um, this was to commemorate uh, just a brief history lesson. Kansas had was the first state in, during the Civil War for the Union Army to recruit uh, black soldiers into the Union Army. We were the first to see battle. Um, there is some dispute because of the movie Glory uh, that puts a Massachusetts uh, company up there and it has to do with a paperwork uh, problem that didn't give us, that, that you could also say Massachusetts was the first, but Kansas was actually the first. This was proposed many years ago, and the legislation was very specific. Uh, Senator Anthony Hensley was the sponsor of it years ago, and it was to, for the Department of Administration and the Kansas Historical Society to write up a plan about a mural, and that's all it okayed was the plan. So that was done years ago. I wanna say it was 15, 20 years ago, wasn't it? Do you know? It, it was longer than that. It was a long time ago. Okay. Okay. Okay, I know I didn't work on it. It was long enough ago, that I, and I've been here a long time, so I know I didn't work on it. And so it was before this committee was formed, and what happened is we had that checked out legally, and all it never permitted the actual process of going through with the mural. There was no legislation. We presented the report, and it never went further, and I had a conversation with Senator Hensley at the time, and of course he's not here to do that now, but he was willing to bring forward. So the question, this is a very important part of our, our military history in Kansas and our cultural history. And um, it's, it's a matter of uh, whether we wanna continue with this, in which case we would have to get another uh, legislation that authorized the actual development of the mural. And that has never been done. The one issue we have to consider in all of these other, it does help that we have this group that worked on women's suffrage that are willing to raise funds. 
it is unlikely the legislature is going to write us a check for this. So the question becomes, we don't have a partner in this at this point in time. And so how do you wanna proceed? Do we just keep it on hold for a while or do we decide to move forward with uh, to recommend legislation? I will just say from a historian's point of view, there's no question this is an important uh, topic. That has never been an issue. Would you say it's not an issue for me at all? The issue is, do we have help? Because this is not a body that is, it, none of us can raise the money because we have other concerns that we have to raise money for. So the question is, how do we do this? Or do we find somebody who wants to be a partner on this if we think it goes through? Basically, it's been sitting on the table for a long time ever since we found out that we couldn't move without legislation. So we either have to introduce legislation or just let it sit there. And I want to do it consciously, whichever we decide. Yes, Dr. Wynn. Thank you. And for those who were here when we did the Brown mural, uh, there was some pushback because this had already been on the table and it, those people felt it should have moved forward before Brown. So my question is, if we do legislation, do we have to wait until you get a, buy, a, a cooperative group, fundraising group? I don't think that is required legally. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, no, that would not be required legally. Uh, if we follow precedent from other statues and murals, you can just say that we could create a fund uh, for private gifts and donations to be put into that fund. Uh, it, previous uh, statutes haven't actually specified who the, you know, the donors would be. Okay, as a follow-up. If I remember, though, it said, the language said something about funding coming from the state in that original. It didn't. It just, it didn't. Said, the, it just said the report. All it, I've looked at it many times okay. and looked at it again. It just says to create a report. Um, well, not yeah, so I don't, all I know is that I don't have any funding and nor do I have <laughs> any. Where it come from. I don't know where okay. it would come from. So, and that so that's said, an issue is can we take on, how many things can we take on at once? But this has been on, Oh yeah. I want to bring it up because it's important and it's been on Hold the back for burner for a very long time. Right. I did invite the people that originally talked to uh, Senator Hensley about this to two different meetings and they did not show up. So, um, and I understand. So, so yes, to preempt all that. I would, th I would be interested in moving it forward. Okay. Do we want to go for a bill? Is there any down? There's no downside in moving forward. The only downside for me is a very pragmatic one. And I'm just going to be honest with it. It's this committee is not set up to raise money. Um, we all have to raise money for other things. <laughs> and so we, the bill doesn't have to say that, but we can only proceed. I think in my observation of Brown v. Board, that was a problem at times, is that we didn't have any money in hand. And um, a couple people got pushed really hard to raise the money finally at the end. And so having been in those meetings, it was a big stressor for the African American Affairs Commission, for instance, because they it, it was given to them um, to raise the money, and that is a, that's a diff. It's something that, as someone who's in not in the legislature but in the executive branch, it's really hard when a bill passes. I'm going to be very blunt about this and open, but there's no funding with it and that we have to follow through. And it's very difficult if you're given that task when you suddenly then have to become a fundraiser on top of it. So I, I just want us to do this. I'm for this mural. I'd like to make it pub public. I'm not against it at all, I'm for it. I just want there to be a process that includes knowing the money's gonna be there. Well, oh, wait, no, let Peter finish and then Tim. No, but should that should maybe the African American Affairs Commission be a part of this discussion? That's what I'm wondering if we should invite them to talk fall on to them. us about this. You know, because I mean, we're all in that boat where things pass, and then we just get it just kind of gets dumped on your lap, and mm. 
and you got, and if it's going to get dumped on their lap, like you know, then it might be good to have them involved. In the, I know I would appreciate it if I if it was going. Uh, yeah, it would be. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, that's the point of view I'm bringing is that many of us have experienced that. And we've got to find a way that they are in the table on the, they're in the room when we talk about this, if they're going to be the vehicle. Yeah. So I, I, I strongly Kim. agree with uh, Dr. Wynn on this. We need to move forward. I think we need to move forward with legislation. I understand, um, uh, Jenny, or Chairwoman Wynn, I, uh, or Chen. Chen. Uh, <laughs> we rhyme. <laughs> I understand um, your concern, mm -hmm. but we need a private partner champion. We need one or two private partner champions, and nothing is real until it's in writing. Um, and we're going to be able to find that champion, I think, a lot easier if we can say half of this process has already um, been approved. Um, so I think we need to go forward. Okay. Do you want, do one of you want to make a motion? Can, can I ask a quick question? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, first of all, is there, we already have chosen a location for this mural, right? On the fourth floor? I don't is, think so. Okay. I, there was a recommendation at the time, but that was before the Brown mural came. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been other stuff put in the Capitol since then. There was no visitor center at the time. Mm -hmm. So, so we're still open. So I think that most everything in that original report is probably invalid because it was a time, it was a process. So. Are you sure that was a proposal? Because that would be competing with Curry's work. You mean right under the Curry mural? Oh, on the first floor, under, a different floor. Got it. Did anyone else think that too, yeah. under? Thank you. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay. I have to find that report and before somebody can. Okay. Do you so do we have a motion? Was that a motion that you made? Sure, I'll make that motion. <laughs> and could Heather read back the motion? <laughs> okay. Um, do you want... No, do you have, it, isn't it that this is something we would like authorization from the legislature to move forward on? So we're process? proposing a bill be drafted. Yes. Authorizing, I mean, the bill be drafted authorizing the Capital Preservation Committee to start the process, define the process. Well, I think the problem with the old legislation was it didn't. Everyone thought it gave us permission to move ahead, but it didn't. It only so said this the report. is new legislation. So this would this would be new legislation right. to move ahead on commissioning the first a, Kansas colored mural. Did you get that? You want to go again? Uh, yeah, just as a no, uh, this committee doesn't have the authority to to make or sponsor legislation. So it, much like other, it, I would need a request from. A legislator uh, after the committee approves for a bill to be made. If that... There was a motion to request permission to for legislation. Yes, that that sounds correct. Oh, but since she's a legislator, could she introduce it? I would consider that a request, <laughs> but but this committee isn't, wouldn't be the sponsor of it, is, is what right. I'm getting at. Right, we can't sponsor anything, yeah. Yes, sorry. You, those of you that are le in the legislature could sponsor it. Yes. I think it would just be as simple as the committee recommends that the revisor draft legislation. It doesn't say that we're authorizing it since we cannot, but we are directing that the revisor have that legislation be drafted and that someone could introduce it at a later time. You did that well, <laughs> but you're going you're the person who moved it. Okay, are you seconding it? So Tim seconding it. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it passes. 
Okay, the next thing on the agenda is the Ad Astra Plaza. And I asked Senator Bowers to take the lead on this because she and I had a conversation uh, that she initiated with me about this is the Ad Astra statue. There's at least one of us that's new in this committee this time. And um, through a lot of research, I went through all the records. It was, a lot of it was from the old Arts Commission that we have in the archives of the State Historical Society. And that the artist wanted payment. Uh, the artist wanted more money than he was given because he agreed to do the statue for free, ultimately. His signature's on it. There's legally, it was all signed, he agreed. But the state allowed him to have a fundraising project for Ad Astra, which included this plaza that has bricks with the donor's names in it that's on the Capitol. It's very different than anything else on the Capitol grounds. And it was supposed to have a statue, a replica of it um, that we have never received um, in that plaza of the Ad Astra statue. This has been a very delicate situation because the artist has now passed away, but his son is in control of this, is my understanding. And Frank tells me, because he's been out there, there's a lot of bricks that were never laid in that are fundraising bricks from the 70s, 80s, from the 80s. And it, it, we were just having a conversation. This can't just keep coming up every year, every year, every year. This, was a, this is something where I learned two things from doing the research on this project, is one, we have to have the funding secured. That's why I'm so interested in the funding, whoever's gonna pay for it, before we have an artist start. And I learned that copyright as an issue has to be signed over to the state, or because right now people cannot use images of Ad Astra, the statue, because the family maintains the copyright, not the state, even though it's on a public building. So I learned two things from all this research I did for some legislators a few years ago to try to work through this. And I am not a lawyer, but basically looking at all these documents. And I look at Frank, because he did some other research for me too from the Department of Administration. But um, so we have this situation where we have a fundraising piece on our property of the Capitol from the past that never was completed and we're stuck in limbo. I give it, I hand, there's, there's the introduction. I hand it over to you, Senator. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, actually, if you walk and then Frank, tell me if I'm right, is this podium on the Southwest corner of the Capitol complex? And so we have a podium about five foot tall that says on this podium stands an exact replica of the Ad Astra. So we have a blank podium with the plaque on it with no statue. I don't think that's right to be on our capital ground. So in my mind, we need to finish it, put the statue on there, attain it. However, we need to do this because we still, in the owner's eyes, need to pay for it. I believe that can be through donations and nothing that this committee has to do, but I believe that's very possible. That's the piece that I'm most concerned about. The statue is in Salina, and it's downtown in a window, last I saw, seven, eight foot tall, very beautiful, looks just like the one on the top. It either needs to be on that statue if we're going to acquire, or on that podium, or somewhere on the grounds. So uh, last, Jenny and I chatted, Frank, does that pedestal, is it built to hold the statue as far as you know from your research 20 years ago or 15 years ago? Is that still a good place to put it? Do we just put it there if we can acquire it? Or do we take the podium down and start over? Yes, when we looked at this a few years ago, we had our uh, structural engineer internal at the time look at it and there was no question at that time that uh, it was designed for that specific purpose. Um, a lot of time has elapsed, I will say. Um, 
I would also add that there was additional wing walls uh, that were built on both sides, uh, both north and south of the sidewalk, and they were intended to have these large casted bronze uh, plaques um, done as well, and those were not finished. I believe there may be one or two of the six or eight that were intended. Um, in addition to that, there was some three or 400 bricks that have already been stamped with uh, names of donors and records of who gave every thing from $100 up at the time. So we did some initial um, cost uh, investigation at the time. It was, I believe Senator Hardy was the one that was kind of leading that effort and fundraising. Um, and we were into tens of thousands of dollars um, for a physical bringing the crane, setting the statue, putting all these brick pavers in, and then the cost of uh, doing the additional castings. And that was aside from any compensation for the actual uh, statue or the figure that's sitting in the studio, as the senator said. So um, it would certainly need much more investigation at this time. Um, all efforts to raise money prior to um, the passing of the, the artists um, seem to come up short. Um, we address this at multiple meetings. Um, I personally believe, yes, if we're going to put it on the grounds, I think there's another appropriate place for it, and that could potentially even be inside the gallery or inside the space. Um, to me, having something that's exactly the same as something that I look up to the north and see on top of the uh, the uh, dome um, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and it's a very prominent area. Um, so I think long term we should be thinking about how can that area best be used uh, for other um, intended functions. Long answer. I I think my goal is to bring the statue to Topeka, and if if we need to do more investigating, if the artist would allow it to be another place if we can raise the funds to acquire it would be a, another topic and, and per, perhaps proposals to where it could be or what the ideas could be. So I think we just need to scope that out. The pavers are something I haven't looked at. I, I just believe that pedestal either needs to have something on it or not that. It That is a very valuable corner piece, I believe, of our capital complex, and we need to do that right. So... Uh, I would continue myself pursuing bringing that statue to Topeka and how that looks is I'm, I'm very open-minded with, with ideas. So to me, that's the goal of this plaza project. If we want to do those pavers, I do think this was Governor Graves' yes, timeline. Yes, Graves. so uh, a lot of Salina folks are... And interested still in this, as I understand, and the bricks I believe are stacked in Salina, waiting to be put down. But that's that's another piece of this plaza that I'm not really in tune to. I I just believe that statue needs to come to Topeka, but where? And I'd be happy to keep pursuing that. And I know we can leave it on the agenda for future discussions if we if we work out more details too. But that that's how I'm on this agenda. I threw out the idea that if we, the statue is, aren't they talking about 80, 90,000 that they want to release it? Um, it would be great also in the visitor center where you could take your picture with it because it's very difficult to have a picture with that astro. I mean, it's beautiful up at the top of the dome, but you don't have the same relationship with it. So there's lots of options of where that could go it's just sort of unprecedented to have this fundraising brick thing on the Capitol grounds. And I'm, this is a hard thing to bring forward, but I think it's my job to bring hard things forward to this committee is that my other experience, because my agency has many historic sites that have done bricks, they don't last very long. And so the reality is once they're out there for a while, they just completely start to disintegrate. It's, it's a great fun, it seems like a great fundraising tool, but you can't promise anybody their name on a brick long-term is what I've learned, because they deteriorate. And then the agency either has to replace them, and then that's another cost. So it's, I'm just putting out some, I'm bringing it to you because we had this discussion and we don't know what to do, but this ultimately it seems like it lands in the lap of this committee. And so how we proceed on this is 
is going to be delicate and we need to be careful. And, um, but do, do people have thoughts on, we can just keep rolling it over every year to the next meeting, but it is a serious, I think it's also disappointing to, this, to the sculptor's family. Um, if we keep this going, it's not fair to the artist. I mean, he's now passed, but um, there is a lot of paperwork in the Arts Commission's files because they were in charge of that project that does um, see that they legally, he, they legally, he illegally agreed to do it without payment. I don't have much, and you all look too, you have some things, but not a lot. I was gonna bring those with me and I forgot. Um, do you remember anything in there that would give us direction from what administration has, Frank? I don't remember the specific language, but I do believe we have the ability or authority since the project was never completed, it's underfunded to repurpose or change the function of that designated space on the grounds. Okay. Um, aside from whatever efforts or future efforts to work with the family to try to bring that to Topeka mm -hmm. to the state house. Yeah. I think and I wouldn't mind bringing it to the state house and using it in another way. It just, it just seems like, I think we need some direction. If any of you have any ideas of what to do, because this keeps coming up. Well, the action is, do we work to to discontinue that project, but try to use the sculpture is what I think you want in a different way, the smaller one, like putting it, I'm just gonna say, cause we do the visitor center, putting it in the visitor center where people could take pictures with us and things like that. Um, and this may not be the meeting we can decide, but. Well, did they raise any? Did uh, did Senator Hardy? No, uh, no funds right now. Uh, very good possibilities, though, with just okay. basic background. I, I'm certain the funds can be raised. And that would be to get the statue and bring it to Topeka. Statue, yes. I, I have not worked on the brick side yeah. whatsoever. And, and maybe that's a topic with the historical museum. Perhaps they could be with you all in a different capacity as long as they're brought back to Topeka. I, there's just so many different angles. My thought was we just need to put the statue on the pedestal. It was just that simple. It was kind of shameful to see an, an open space advertise of what it is with nothing on it. That doesn't, mm -hmm. it's not very professional. It's a very valuable piece of our complex that really needs to be completed or start over. That's just my idea of history too. And, but we do have a purpose of what was to be there. So I don't think we need to do away with the original idea, maybe just redo it with more modern times. And uh, I hate to say it, but selfies are very, a very big deal when people are in the Capitol too, that this is a, a very photogenic statue too. Yes. Are you saying, since I don't know a lot about this, are you saying if you brought the statue back and it went in the visitor center, for example, would the family be upset that the bricks and all that part, or did they buy into that and agree to that piece? We don't know. I, oh, okay. I do believe it was a combination of all this together, hence the word plaza, way, way before my time too, but it seemed to me it was a package deal. Just a second. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so really the goal is here to raise seven to $80,000 to pay the family to bring the statue back. Is that correct? Is it 70,000? I don't know where the money for the bricks went. There, I mean, I don't, I assume the family kept that money. It's very confusing. So I guess we guess when you have a fact finding mission is how much money have we raised, if any, and then how much does it satisfy the family to get the statue back to the state house? or to the state house. And then from there, I think, I mean, surely corporate sponsorships and stuff like that is certainly within the realm of possibility. I don't know if the state has any mechanisms of raising money that way, but certainly maybe even the committee could look at a fundraiser or something. I mean, I think many companies in the state are proud to be in this state and would be glad to sponsor something that's in the state house. 
So my recollection in speaking with the artist's son and Senator um, Hardy at the time was the initiative, the goal was to start the plaza. And then the focus changed to what do we need to do to raise or donate these funds or raise this money to create the full uh, figure you see on top of the dome today. And that's where the momentum dropped off that there's no reason to donate to this plaza when we're trying to put the, the sculpture on top of the dome and that they did take the full figure casting as well as some of the smaller figures. I believe there's one here in the state house and use it as a public campaign around the state. They put it on the back of a truck and drove around in an effort to raise money for the larger project, never finishing the original concept of the uh, surface plaza. I think that is the best way to say it is the original concept was never realized. And so there's bricks, book, bricks stacked somewhere. There's this partial, but I do know, I think the family, I can't guess what the family would say, but my guess is, but I'm going to guess, is that it seems to focus on paying for that statute. Now, not the statue, not a statute. Um, it, it, but I have not had that conversation with them. They did a nice job in retaining all the records of the donations. So we, while I believe we don't have to have a physical brick, the bricks are a maintenance nightmare for my team. Mm -hmm. um, but we could we could do something to recognize the donations of the time um, in some fashion, even if it was an interior exhibit or something on the state historic site. I think there's a way to recognize all the efforts that went forward and the donations that were made without physically placing the bricks. I would probably agree with that too. I was just going to say, yeah, I think anything bringing it to closure is, is a, and which is bringing the statue here and that. But I know I might have some background in preservation and when the plaza was uh, developed and planned, there was a lot of question about doing this much of an effort in this area. Is this appropriate? Is this, you know, because you say this is such valuable land. Is this is the best way we want to have it for posterity? And there's a lot of question about that. So I think it's a, it can be appropriate to revisit that. Mm -hmm. What is the best use and what is there? And I don't think there's, we're bound to do what was decided at that time. If it wasn't done, uh, we don't have to go back and make the same mistakes. Let's look at it anew and what's the best way to use that area. And I think that's, I think that's the most important thing that this committee should look at. So what we're really looking at today is, do we have permission from this group for some of us to look into this, to figure out and bring back some possibilities? Um, because this is stalled and it, I can't see it moving at this point. If Senator Hardy couldn't do it, and he appeared before this committee several times, if he couldn't do it, I don't know how, how we can do it. Um, and it just seems like, I, so I'm glad to know that it was a discussion at the time, is putting a fundraising plaza on the Capitol appropriate? So that is a piece of knowledge I didn't have. So, um, well, I, I don't like to be the person who keeps suggesting subcommittees, but we do need to study this in a smaller group and then bring back ideas after it's scoped out and perhaps talking to all the interesting interested parties to see if we can find a, a, a solution to, to finish this topic. And I'm, I am happy to serve on subcommittee. I'll even chair it if you like, Jenny. You would if, chair it. If you want to have a subcommittee. I would be I, on it, but if you would and, chair it, that'd be great. So I, that would be my suggestion. Would you be on it, Larry, since you were here at the time? <laughs> okay, let's get Larry to help us. Because I'm, it, that's a piece I didn't have that there was question at the time of even doing that. And that's, help, that's helpful to know. And I think, I think we just have to bring it to closure and move, move forward. Um, it's frustrating to the family and it's frustrating to visitors here not understanding what it is. So, um, so well, maybe the three of us could talk. Frank, you may have to be in on this. I'm adding you, sorry, Frank, because it's a physical thing and you're the last person to talk to the family. So um, is that okay? Okay, so the four of us, if you'll chair it. Did you get that down? Yeah. Thank you. You guys are so efficient. Okay. 
Then the others are more just a discussion of where we're at. Shall we just keep going? Mm -hmm. And we'll get done. Okay, um, the Obermeyer murals, which this committee has talked about before, have damage to them. And how are we gonna proceed? Okay, so I um, took some initial um, efforts from the State Historical Society to reach out to uh, a group out of a Colorado a conservator that specializes in this sort of work. Um, and it was described as a blind cleavage, cracking, lifting, and lost paint. And anybody that's walked by, I think there's three of the murals that are uh, missing now, substantial pieces. Um, so um, an amount of time had elapsed, and, and with us basically having last year with COVID, we could not bring in the conservator, so we have re-engaged with them and we've gotten some updated costs of anywhere from nine to 12,000. That includes their time, that includes their travel expenses. Uh, the process is about a five to seven day process with their curator on site or the conservator on site. Um, and they do say that um, we will continue to need to do proper treatment for these murals in the future. Um, those murals were painted directly on the plaster themselves where a lot of these other murals after the renovation were on canvases applied over. And we've looked at, as I've stated in previous meetings, we've looked at the humidity, we've looked at all the other features, but this is just uh, what we're left with and uh, it's gonna be something we're gonna continue to need to take care of and preserve. Um, I reached out to uh, Jenny and offered to take the lead as facilities management to try to find some uh, resources to finally take care of this or at least preserve what's there. And uh, that's kind of where we're at, at least in our process. Um, Jenny would have a member of her team uh, that specializes in this area that would oversee the work to make sure it's being done properly. And facilities would just help with the scaffolding and uh, just um, coordination and facilitation of the work. Um, we haven't nailed down a timeline. We haven't issued a purchase order at this point. I just wanted to bring this to the uh, attention of the committee as a whole. Um, most likely this would need to take place after this legislative session, um, given the amount of space and the scaffolding and stuff that would be required in the rotunda. And by then, hopefully more of the travel restrictions have been lifted and the individuals from Colorado could, could make that trip. So that's about all the information I have on it. Jenny may have more specifics as to the process, but I... No, I mean, they are say. reputable um, conservators, so I have no doubt that they'll do a good job. And... Um, yes, we can have staff make, you know, help oversee it. Um, we don't have a conservator on staff anymore, but certainly have people that work with conservators because we have to conserve things all the time <laughs> at our, at our place. And so, um, it needs to be, the public is starting to talk about it a lot. <laughs> they bring their complaints that part of the murals falling apart. Pieces of paint are falling on the floor. So... And you've seen ongoing work throughout the state house. We've got a lot of plaster repair happening. So this is happening elsewhere as well. It just so happens that this is the mural area. So that's why I had uh, agreed to volunteer to kind of take that initiative and get this repaired. So. We appreciate that. No one has an objection to that, right? We'll just move ahead. That's come before the committee before. And then if you want to talk about capital signage, which was an update on where we are on that. Sure. I think... Um, Last couple of meetings, we talked about the uh, the need for additional wayfinding signage and, and some kind of a comprehensive plan. Um, everybody walks up to the state house and can't find the front door, uh, which <laughs> seems like the back door. Um, so we've taken some initial steps already that you've seen in place. Uh, we've added the visitor center signage over the top of the the main entrance, and if you've walked along the uh, the upper portion there, we've also added a visitor center stair uh, signs and bronze plaques at the top of the stairs to to help direct people. Um, the next initiative there is uh, to get rid of all the blue um, metal signs, the ADA signs. Um, we looked at some different signage like the National Park Service and others have used, and we found some uh, four by four bronze uh, poles uh, about five, six feet in height uh, with the international accessibility symbol um, that will have uh, arrows that will direct people primarily from our visitor parking and then all the main points of access uh, at the major intersections from our campus, from people that might be coming downtown. Um, they kind of help direct them to the visitor center entrance and also identify that accessible route. 
And the other one that we've included in the signage package was the uh, visitor so parking sign that you see as you're going into the garage. It's just this big hideous metal sign. Um, looking at putting something there looks a little bit more professional looking uh, with the bronze that's uh, consistent with the light post and everything that you see on our campus. So just trying to tie everything together. Um, we think that'll make a, a, a be a big help for our, our visitors as we get more and more people coming back. And uh, so that's just kind of an initiative that I, I don't know that I've presented it for approval. Uh, Jenny and I kind of talked about it in our sub role and uh, just kind of moving forward on that. But we should see all that done by this spring. It's their jurisdiction to do this at the Department of Administration. So we just want to keep you informed. So if there's something you don't like, let Frank know. No, you can let me know too. <laughs> you can always let me know. <laughs> so, um, yes. So, um, none of those don't take any action. Is there any other business that needs to come before us today? Yes. I just have two quick questions. Um, one, Frank, wh what are we doing to preserve the limestone on the Capitol? It seems like in spots, particularly in the front visitor center, there's a lot of like it's blackening out of, over time with the weather. Um, or, if sometimes this was light posts that are huge long ones that are if they're just I don't know but it's some of the limestone is blackening and I know we obviously went through a huge renovation 10 15 years ago so what are we doing to ensure that the limestone is preserved and we have to spend a lot of money again another 50 years to do it uh, that's a pretty typical ongoing maintenance with the limestone uh, especially in the visitor center um, we had the same thing on the Curtis State Office building it's a continuous process of having a contractor come in there and clean um, uh, clean the stone without damaging the stone and then applying some kind of a waterproof sealant where we can. Um, but we're always going to experience, continue to experience those problems and we try to plan for those, for the cleaning. Perfect, thank you, appreciate that. And the second question is, almost all of our committee rooms are just bare walls. And you know, I was just at a hotel this weekend in Kansas City and they had amazing pictures of just Kansas Prairie and just parts of Kansas. Um, is there any, as a committee in the, in the past looked into putting large pictures of Kansas behind where committees sit, just so someone has something to stare at other than the wall and politicians? <laughs> we, before the renovation, um, I will say the Historical Society was asked to do that um, before the, the they, we had, they were all um, not uh, artwork, they were photography. Um, in all either historical photography or, or more modern in, in many of the committee rooms, especially the ones that were used all the time. And then with the renovation, that all came down. So um, they did, there's just never any push to put it. If you want us to talk about that and sort of put it on the agenda um, in the future, we could do that. I think it, I'd like to explore it if possible, just to see what uh, we could possibly do. It, it is... Um, it can be expensive a little bit, but um, to if you depending on how big they are. But it, it we certainly have collections in the state we can draw from, and sometimes there are artists which Peter would be have more connection with now, but um, that are willing to bring art in for a certain period of time. The question is whether you would want it in there. I mean, if we make reproductions and they go up. We're done with them, you know. It's whenever you take them down when you want to take them down. But it's um, there's different ways to do it at different price points. But yes, so we want to explore. We want that in our minutes to explore. Um, do you want to say artwork? That kind of implies that it's artwork, or just say um, images in uh, images. I mean, right. photography, anything. Yeah. I mean, there's. <laughs> We have talked about that before, so in our older minutes, a couple years ago, we would find the data. Okay. And I can look at, there are some other states that have sort of rotating exhibitions throughout mm -hmm. the Capitol building, so I can look at some of those mm -hmm. uh, programs as models and see what the, what the cost is. And I know the governor's office does that periodically, is rotating art in and out, because I have uh, worked with some of those uh, people um, through many different administrations. That just is part of it. But the legislature, we've never had a formal relationship with like that. Yeah, and I believe our legislators, um, their own offices individually can pick mm -hmm. or borrow portraits from, I think it's D of A or, or someone, maybe it's even um, no, Historical we, Society or something. But yeah, we I, don't do. maybe the legislators can touch on that. But they borrow them from someone. 
I never figured it out, so I bought my own. I don't know where they come from. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we don't have collections that can be bought. We don't have artwork that's, we have a lot of portraits of people and that's, of that you don't know who they are, um, <laughs> that probably came off this building and others many, many years ago. Um, but so I, a lot of people go to local, their local historical society or their local um, art museum if they have one in their, their area and ask for it. Um, it happens every, after every election, we all get calls. So I'm very aware of where to send people. Um, but I think we can explore, if you're just talking about some images that just could be photographs or, we have amazing historical collections of photographs that are pretty remarkable and, um, and, beautiful, and beautiful. So, um, and some modern too, but mostly historical. And then you have access with, with artists. So um, we'll put that on a future exam. Uh, or do you want it, something for this session? Are you talking about? No, just in the future? No rush, just okay. something to explore. Now you get to look at your, we get to look at ourselves on screen, so. <laughs> okay, images in conference rooms. Okay, um, anything else we want to bring up? I greatly appreciate your, all your attendance today, and I greatly appreciate the staff. Thank you for keeping us straight. Hope you don't mind that we went quicker rather than slower. And um, I think we made a lot of movement today. There's two subcommittees. Um, you are going to do, you're going to chair the Ad Astra. I'm going to chair the, um, the suffrage one and, and get us together. Um, and you've been, Larry, you know you're on the Ad Astra. You, you're bringing a valuable piece of history. We didn't know that there was some controversy about that at the time. So um, it just needs to get finished at some point. Um, this has been a lot of work today, and I thank you very much. And uh, I greatly appreciate your attendance, and because um, it may not seem like it every day, but the work we do is really important because it's what the most people see. It's what we do. So <laughs> when they come into the Capitol, so I really appreciate your time, and I greatly appreciate the staff's time. Thank you very much. And maybe I'll get a law degree before the next. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to keep relying on you. <laughs> I can read the statute, but I'm not a lawyer. I can't always interpret it. So uh, my, my job is to interpret the past, not the uh, present. So, okay, anything else? Or shall, shall, we, shall we break for today, for, till the next meeting? Thank you all very much. The meeting's over. Appreciate it.